Okay, macro evolution and micro evolution. Micro evolution is a change in the frequency of alleles in a population. That would be the definition. So what does that mean? Well, let's look at an example. And we're going to look at an example of the medium ground finches studied by the Grants on the Galapagos Islands. Um, for the last 40 years, they've been there or they've had research teams there studying the genetics of the ground finches living on the Galapagos Islands. So let's look at an example here. and We'll graph this out. And on this graph, we can show um, the frequency of the alleles related to beak size. And so on the left side, we have the number of individuals. And on the bottom, we have the average beak size. So in our graph here, we see the average beak size in the middle is the peak. And then you have two extremes, the largest beaks and then the smallest beaks within that population. And this is the frequency of the different um, alleles in that population. And that shows itself then in the phenotype. Because remember, the genotype causes the phenotype. And so if the beak size is a combination of alleles, dominant and recessive, maybe a, maybe a multitude of genes combining together in a variation of dominant and recessive and co-dominant and in, incomplete dominant to make up the beak size. And so by looking at the beak size, we can look at um, the alleles that are showing up. And we can also then do direct genetic tests and, and actually map it out and look at what, what DNA they have as well. And here's what has been observed. So here's an example of this idea of microevolution. So now let's let's change the conditions. So a drought or a rain that change the seeds available, so that now the larger beaked birds have a slight advantage. And so in a generation or two, if you're measuring again, you're going to see a shift in the frequency of alleles. So we'll show that here. Everything shifts a little bit to the right. So now the average beak size is a little bit bigger. And there's more birds that are surviving with the bigger beaks. What that tells us then is that there are more birds, there are more frequency of the alleles that cause the bigger beats to show up in the population. And there's less frequency of the alleles that cause the smaller beaks to show up in the population. But if you look at the ends of our graph here, they still match up the same. The extremes are still the same. And so our gene pool, it still has all the same possibilities in it, from the largest to the smallest, and any combination to cause those beak sizes. So this shift can happen back and forth, and this is called microevolution, because it's a shift in the frequency, but it's not a shift in the species. It's just a shift in what genes are showing up more prevalent in the population versus less so in the population. And this is a direct result of the environment causing this. Now, that's microevolution. So how does a new species come about? And let's, let's expand this a little bit. So now let's think about our finches and our example where maybe this change in environment happens not for a few years and therefore a few generations for finches. Keep in mind they might have two or three generations in a year. But let's say for a century. And so now maybe it's 300 generations. And if this shift keeps happening, it might push further and further to the right of beak size, uh, getting larger and larger. If the larger is always um, the advantage, the beak size is going to shift more and more to larger and larger. And at some point, due to mutations or maybe epigenetic changes in the genes that are expressed, you start to have some birds that have genes that are new, that are outside the norm before, and they're represented by this gap on the graph here. And at the other end of the graph, you might have birds that don't have those genes at all anymore. So now we've changed the gene. We haven't just changed the genes that are showing up in the population. We've actually changed the genes that are in the population. Some have gone away, and some new ones have been added. Well, what we know is if you change enough of the genes, then the chromosomes won't match up anymore, and reproduction can't happen.
think back to meiosis, the chromosomes have to match up. You get half from one parent and half from the other parent, and they have to match up. And if they don't match up, then you have um, usually fatal um, errors in the reproduction, and those cells die. So this, this is what happens here, is that now you have some of the birds at the far end of one extreme can no longer mate with the far end of the other extreme. When that occurs, and it's not an instantaneous thing, it's a gradual thing, but when that occurs, we call this speciation. And that means that those organisms no longer, those individuals can no longer mate with each other. They are now a different species. And they will continue to change and evolve in their new habitats and their new situations. The ones with the larger beak will get larger and larger. The ones with the smaller ones might go extinct, or they might have another trait that is an advantage, and they will proceed to evolve in a new direction, accentuating that other trait, maybe something related to eyesight or wings or something like that. Um, and then they get, and the further they are away from each other, then the further they evolve and the more distant they become and the less like each other they become. And so that is the difference between microevolution is just to change in the frequency of the alleles in the population, but it's not changing the actual genes in the population. It's not changing the gene pool. But enough of those accumulated can lead to macroevolution where there's an actual change in the gene pool and now they can no longer mate with each other and that's speciation. And that's what we really think about when we think about natural selection and evolution.